In an age where computer-generated special effects reign supreme in cinema, Top Gun Maverick is a Mac-10 breath of fresh air. The lengths Tom Cruise and co have gone to in order to deliver as realistic aerial sequences as possible are unprecedented and borderline unimaginable to execute practically through a camera lens. For director Joe Kaczynski though, there was never really another option. I think when you see the film, you really feel what it's like to be a Top Gun pilot. You can't fake that. You can't fake the G-forces, you can't fake the vibration, you can't fake what it looks like to be in one of these fighter jets. We wanted to capture every bit of that and shooting it for real allowed us to do that. Capturing these scenes was never going to be a walk in the park though, and before any of the actors could even step inside the planes they'd call their sets for the foreseeable future, a rigorous Navy approved boot camp lay ahead. I mean it was a lot. What Tom does for fun I think is other people's like hell. It really was, it really was quite tough, but we the only way this film happens is if you have somebody like Tom dedicating as, as much time and effort to us. Tom designed a three month training course for them to go through because he had shot the first Top Gun, he's a pilot, he flies aerobatics, he's done aerial sequences for, in movies for years, so he designed a program that would get them as ready as they could be to be in a Super Hornet, and it took three months for them to go through it, and that doesn't mean it was easy for them to be in the F-18. It's still tremendously difficult and taxing but at least they were able to get through it and do what they needed to do and capture these scenes. Once training was complete, it was time to get into the air. Steady steps needed to be taken, but for Miles Teller, it was a challenge he welcomed. It started out as excitement because we were flying in a, you know, like in a Cessna. So it's just like, hey, we're going, and this is basically, if you want to get your pilot's license, this is, this is step number one, boys. And, and then like the next time we went up in the Cessna, they're like, all right, now we're gonna do a controlled stall. And he turns off the engine. So now you're just free falling in a play. And so it got pretty real pretty quick, to be honest with you. And, and then that, that excitement turned into a lot of adrenaline and I think a healthy amount of kind of nerves. Working out training for the actors and getting them flight ready was one thing. Working out how these highly ambitious aerial sequences would actually be shot was another thing entirely. Fortunately, Kaczynski and the crew had decades of action movie experience on their side. Tom's been making movies for 40 years and done big aerial sequences, so he knew how difficult it was gonna to be to capture all of this, so definitely benefited from his experience. He did an aerial sequence in American Made, he did one a helicopter sequence in Fallout. This was taking it to a whole new level in terms of speed and complexity in terms of these machines, working with the Navy 15 months to figure out how to get the cameras in these things. We had air-to-air, -air, we had cameras mounted on the outside of the jets, so yeah, then the naval aviators, we had to talk to them about movie making, light, altitude, speed, angles that we wanted to get. So yeah, they were serving as cameramen and women on this film as well. It was a huge team of people to pull this off. We were working with Top Gun, the real Top Gun, so we knew we were working with the best of the best, and every day they showed us why they are who they are. I mean, what they were doing for us in this film. Obviously safety was the most important thing, but the professionalism and the skill they exhibit in the aircraft was pretty mind-blowing. Preparation was key for Kaczynski, who had to meticulously plan every single motion the planes would make while up in the sky. Because once those planes took off, the entire scene was purely in the hands of the actors and their pilots. I would be there on the flight line, setting up the cameras all the way until the canopy closed, but once they pulled away, I didn't see them until they came back an hour later. So the only person you could talk to was the pilot, and you wouldn't even know how good the footage was until you got back. So when, once we got back to base, then we would play the footage and then we would see like, oh, the lighting was off, oh, that, ah, I could have done more there. My eye line isn't gonna match from what that guy just did. And so it's, it, to be able to film this, it was a highly technical kind of undertaking. And yeah, you had to do a lot of different things when you're up in the jet. Here comes some Gs. There's five Gs. Seven Gs. I mean, the biggest challenge is not being there, you know, to give feedback, obviously. So you're, you're putting a lot of responsibility and trust in our cast, but they're incredible people. You're starting the camera, you're stopping the camera, 
There was also something you could do accidentally where you would erase all the footage that you had just done, which I did one time. And so that's, I was the guinea pig for that. Then people learned like, okay, if you start it, you really need to wait five seconds to have the red light come on, whatever, then you're good. Every detail was worked out ahead of time, but ultimately when they're up there, it's up to them to turn the camera on and play the scene. So that was a unique way of directing the film for those particular scenes, but it's the only way to capture what we were able to get. And what was captured translates incredibly onto the screen. This is no more obvious than in the film's exhilarating third act, which provides some of the most memorable action movie moments in recent memory. For me, it, the third act was an opportunity to take the Top Gun aesthetic and flip it on its head. You know, we're used to this certain palette and look for these Top Gun sequences, but to put it in that environment with four jets on a real Navy low-level course, which was shot in the Cascade Mountains of Washington, that week was some of the, I think, the most spectacular footage and some of the most intense flying we did on the film. I mean, the mountains are, are less than 100 feet off each wingtip, and you are moving so fast, and there's some cloud cover sometimes, and you can't, you're in the back seat, so you can't necessarily see what's going on. There are times when the action feels so real in the cockpit that it appears as if the cast are genuinely reacting to the scenario they find themselves in as much as they are acting. This is highlighted in one of the film's most challenging aerial maneuvers. For these pilots, when they go over a mountain peak, they don't go over like this. As soon as they get to the top, they go inverted and then go, the back, go down there and then they flip back over. And there's one or two times doing that where I like came out of my seat and I actually hit the, it's in the movie actually, I hit my head on the canopy and I thought it was a unusable take, but that's, those are oftentimes the ones you end up using. His strap should have been tighter but it looks so great to see him drop out of his straps. So we left that in the film. Even the scene where Dark Star flies over Ed Harris, it destroyed the set. You watch it rips the roof off the guard shack. That was not planned. That was a one take thing where we destroyed the set and that's the only shot we got. And that's in the movie. It's this level of realism that the filmmakers could only have dreamt of when originally planning how these practical shots would come together. The amount of training and preparation pays off on the big screen though, something that became quickly obvious early on during the shoot. I mean, honestly, when we would get back and watch the footage, you know, especially the runs that, that Tom was doing in this because Maverick is, he's doing some runs that are just more intense. And so whenever we would watch footage of anybody who grabbed a really great run, we we're starting to get a sense of what the big experience was gonna be like. There's one one moment we were shooting out in the salt flats on one of the military ranges doing the low level flyovers. And I was sitting with the camera and the jet came over my head, like 15 feet over my head and did a pull up. And as it did, it did a double spiral of dust. All right, three, two, one. And I just remember like knowing in that moment that that shot was gonna end up in the film. There's no doubt that the unprecedented extent that Kaczynski and the team have gone to to film Maverick in the most realistic way possible results in a spectacle to behold. For a director whose career started in the world of CGI, with the iconic Gears of War Mad World advertisement of 2006, and then moved into feature films with Tron Legacy and Oblivion, it was certainly a new experience, but not one that means he's ready to leave the world of CG behind just yet. It's a tool in the toolbox. There's certain things that you just need it for, and there's certain worlds and certain stories that require it, but for me, capturing things in camera, mostly in camera, is the most fun. And, you know, having fun making films is why I do it. Fun is exactly what Top Gun Maverick is, a summer blockbuster that hits all of the notes you'd want, but is taken to the next level thanks to action that feels so real it threatens to burst out of the screen. The mission may well have been a long, daunting and difficult one, but has been executed with all the precision you'd expect from Top Gun's finest. That was awesome. For more on Top Gun Maverick, check out our review, and for everything else, stick with IGM.